The Todoist team has been on a roll lately, releasing several cool new features, including an entirely new design and a task duration feature that's really handy for time blocking. And there's a couple of other small things too. Let me show you. So first of all, to get access to the new design, well, it may be available for you already by the time that you're watching this video. But if it's not, what I want you to do is click your account icon up here at the top right. And then if it says new version available somewhere around here, just click that first and then to do is will refresh. Now, after you've done that, you might or might not see this new app layout beta toggle. If you don't see it, just go over to settings and then go over to advanced and then just toggle the experimental features button right there. Okay, then to do is we'll refresh and now you should see this toggle. So you can click that, you'll see another refresh. This is the new Todoist design. I think it looks super clean. So especially if I close the sidebar over here, look at how clean this looks. I think it's wonderful. And you'll see that the search box now lives over here. And if you click that, it actually says open the command menu. It's now called the command menu. So if you go command K, that'll open as well. And this is the search field. So for example, I can type skydiving and then I can see all my skydiving related tasks and projects and quickly go to one, for example, this one. Um, but I can also uh, just start typing inbox and quickly go to the inbox. And it'll also give you suggestions for keyboard shortcuts for how to do these things faster. So that's really nice. Um, so projects look much cleaner. The upcoming view looks really clean. If you click into a task, it all looks really clean. It just looks more modern. I like it a lot. So aside from that, what else can you do? Well, there's a really nice multi-select feature now. So let's say I wanna move these three items which are currently in the inbox to a proper project. I will hold shift and then click the top one and the bottom one, and I've selected them all. You used to have to click move to project right here, but now what you can do is you can actually just grab them and drag them into a project. Boom, now they live inside this project. So that's super handy and just a nice little quality of life upgrade. Now, another thing you can do is you can view a project's completed task. So to do that, just go over to view and then just toggle completed tasks and you'll see that these are the things that I already did in this project. I prefer to keep this turned off by default, but it can be nice to look at your completed tasks to see what you've already done for a nice sense of accomplishment. So you're not just focused on what you still have to do, but you also remind yourself what you've already done, which is really important. You're probably doing quite a lot, you know. Okay, I'll turn that off now. The big headline new feature that's been added lately is task duration. So let me show you how those work. I really like those. I will go into this task right here and I will go into the subtask called record a role for this video that I'm recording right now. And if I click into this task, now you've always been able to set a date in Todoist. It's called the due date. However, I recommend using this as an intention date. I recommend against using this as a hard deadline, but instead use this as a planning date. Now, in the future, Todoist will support separate start dates and due dates. However, that's in the future. I don't know how fast that's coming, but they have semi-officially confirmed that that is coming, that is coming. But for now, just think of this as the date that you're planning to do this task, okay? So you've always been able to set that. So for example, I can set that to today. Um, and what I've actually here, I've actually already set the parent task to today. So let's operate on the parent task instead. I will take this one away and we'll operate on this parent task record video right here. Now, what I can do is click into its due date. And the new feature here is this time block at the bottom. So if you click time, now you can say what time you want to do this. So what time is it right now? It's 1830. So I can say 1830. And I can say, let's work on this for an hour and a half, for example. So that's until 8 p.m. Now you'll see that there's a time zone option here. I can either do floating time or set it to a specific time zone. And this is really neat. Basically, if you travel between time zones, then you can say, I want all my Todoist times to be in the time zone that I'm at. So if I schedule a task for 5 p.m. Um, next Wednesday, and then next Wednesday, I'm in a different time zone, it'll be 5 p.m. in that time zone, right? But I can also say, no, 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 all my tasks are in a specific time zone. So in the time zone that I set in the to do a setting. So if I put something in there, it's 5 p.m. Amsterdam time, no matter where I am. So, you know, depending on whether you maybe have meetings that are set in specific time zones or whether you're using to do is more for something like time blocking, which probably should travel with you through your time zones, you might want to use one or the other right here. I'm just going to leave it on the default. Now I'm going to click save. And now what happens? Now it says today from 6.30 to 8 p.m. I've got this task scheduled and it shows here as well. So that's neat, but there's no calendar view inside Todoist. Not yet. 
That's coming as well. I've seen it. It's going to be pretty cool. It might be a little rudimentary at first, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll build it out later. But it's going to be cool to start with. Um, what you can do, however, is you can go to your Google Calendar. So here I'm looking at my Google Calendar, and look at that. This task has actually been listed from 6.30 to 8 on my calendar. Now, I can also drag this and say, no, actually, I think it's going to be from 6.30 to 8.30. And if I go back to Todoist, that'll actually sync back. It might take a second, but it's going to sync back to be 6.30 to 8.30. There you go. The synchronization has happened. So this is cool. So after that, if I want to, let's go here. After that, if I want to uh, do outline course, and I want to do that from let's say today 9 p.m. for one and a half hours I can save that and now it's listed here from 9 p.m. to 1030 and if I go back to Todoist this task is also listed from 9 p.m. to 1030 so you've got your two-way synchronization and you can time block your day like this very very handy now what I should say is there is a limitation unfortunately you cannot yet filter on the duration element so you can create in Todoist your own filters if that's something that you want to learn more about you should check out my Todoist course organize your life with Todoist link to the course is in the description below the video um, but you cannot yet filter on the duration element. Okay, hopefully that's coming in the future. I imagine they'll add that um, eventually. But for now, it's still really, really handy for time blocking. So those are the new features. If you want to learn an entire workflow, if you want to be more organized and more productive, and you want to use Todoist to help you do that, check out, first of all, my free Todoist cheat sheet. The link to that is in the description below the video. And second of all, my entire Todoist course. The link to that is also in the description. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're as excited about these updates as I am. Have a great day. Ciao.